Hello, my name is Matthew Randall, and in this video tutorial, I want to have a look at using component manipulation to um, shape a uh, primitive to fit a reference image. In this case, I'm just going to keep it really simple, and I'm just going to use this vase as a reference image. Um, obviously, if we're taking a picture of a, for, for something for reference, what we'd want to do is um, uh, uh, is probably take it a bit further away with a zoom, so we don't have so much perspective in our image here um, but this will do for our purposes and the other thing as well is if I was working with a reference image I'd probably want to use a proper Maya project but for the purpose of this tutorial we're just going to bring the vase uh, uh, directly in rather than put it into our Maya project okay so to bring the, uh, the vase uh, image in I'm just going to press space and go up to our four up view um, I want to use the vase reference image either in the front view or the side view it doesn't matter which one because the shape of the vase is circular so it's going to be the same in both axes what we don't want to do is do it in the top view okay so in here we're going to go view uh, sorry a view we want to click on so in our side view I'm going to click on the view and go image plane and go import image okay and then I'm going to go to my downloads folder. So it's just going to be under my profile here, downloads. I'm just going to select it. There we are. Open. Uh, so I'm just going to go in, press space on here and go into the, to go into the side view. Uh, and then what we want to do is we're going to go, I'm going to bring in a, a cylinder now. Okay. Uh, one of the first things I want to do is make sure that my cylinder's got the right number of subdivisions. I could do that uh, by just going create cylinder and then looking at, the um, sorry, uh, create polygon, create polygon primitives, and selecting a cylinder. If I click on that box there, a set of options will come up, and that'll allow me to set the number of um, uh, subdivisions in here. If you've already created a cylinder like I have here, you can actually just open up the channel box. Uh, and you can go into inputs and just click on polygon cylinder here and you can edit those attributes here now once you've done any kind of component level manipulation this will not work um, it will just get confused uh, but at this stage we can do that I just want to set the number of subdivisions to 8 okay so we've got 8 subdivisions now we want these subdivisions in order to shape our cylinder okay now what I want to do is I'm going to move this into x-ray mode now so I'm just going to click on uh, x-ray here Okay, so we can kind of see through the surface a little bit to, to our reference image. And what I want to do is just move this into the middle, because you'll notice that the anchor point is in the middle here. And I just want to move this into the middle. Okay, so that now when I click on the scaling tool and I scale this, notice how I just scale one axis at a time. I don't, uh, I, I rarely just move the middle and do all, all, all the axes at once. I just find that uh, confused. I, I find you don't, get very accurate results doing that I find it's a lot clearer just manipulating one axis at a time so I'm moving this axis and just getting the height you know the bottom and the top of this cylinder should line up if that's not lining up just obviously just move and scale uh, as you need to now what I want to do is scale the uh, the width of the cylinder but what I want to do is just going to move it into perspective view here and I want to just keep an eye on this perspective view. I'm just going to zoom it in a little bit if I start scaling this now what you'll see is actually Rather than scaling the width of the cylinder, what we're actually doing is squashing the cylinder, okay? Or we're scaling the width only in one axis. What we actually need to do is scale it in both this axis and this axis, okay? Uh, and so that's something to be really, really careful of. Because if I was just looking at this image here, I'd be thinking everything's okay, all right? Okay, so, um, but actually, when we go back to our, our perspective view, no, it's not okay. What we're doing is wrong. So I'm just going to press Control Z just to kind of undo those steps. What we can do is, if I use this handle here, but press control, what will happen is, so if I hold control while moving this handle, what will happen is it will manipulate the other two axes. So you just watch here. It's going to scale the other two axes. So that's working exactly as I want. It's, it's bringing that cylinder in. It's scaling them both evenly. So that's a really good technique of keeping, for keeping these two axes the same size, okay? Excellent. Okay, so with that in mind, what I'm doing then is holding control and using this to scale both axes at the same time. I think I've got to just kind of move it across a little bit. That should be fine. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I've got my cylinder in the generally the, 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 the right position. Next thing I want to do um, is move these uh, edge loops. Um, so they kind of match the features of the cylinder that I want to actually uh, um, 
shape, okay? Or, or I want to, I, I want a map uh, that I'm trying to shape my mesh to, okay? So I'm going to go into edge mode. So I'm selecting edges. Select. I'm going to select. Start by selecting this entire edge loop. I just want to move it to the maximum width of this vase, okay? So that we're we're matching the width of this vase. Excellent, okay? I could refine my placement a little bit here as well, actually. Uh, I might just go back into object mode and just use the move tool just to kind of move it a little bit better. That's fine. I could scale it as well, but I, I think I'm just gonna leave it as is. That will do, okay? Uh, so back into edge mode. So I'm just gonna move these edges to where I wanna uh, highlight the features. So I think, um this edge seems I want to kind of put I think I might have an edge there and put an edge at the thinnest point here. Okay, it's really the thinnest and the thickest points. It's the most extreme points you want to, that you want to match. You want to try and avoid having too many edge loops. Um if you have sorry, if we have too many uh, edge loops or or subdivisions here then then what will happen is the computer is is, is the, the computer's not going to be able to smoothly interpolate you, you if you have too many points the computer's not going to be able to smoothly interpolate the surface around these curves so one of the, the kind of key things is not using too many points and letting the computer smoothly interpolate the surface for you rather than you trying to do it. if you have too many points you end up because you're, you know, as a human being, you can't get it perfect, and you end up having um, too many points for the. Uh, 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 you end up with with the with the computer having to, a uh, kind of an undulating surface, if you will. Okay, so fewer points is actually better if you can get away with it. Okay, great. So that's um, that's my edge loops positioned the way I want them. So now what I want to do is I want to go uh, into my edges now and select edge loops. So I'm going to select, so yeah, just like I did before, select edge loops. I'm going to use the scale tool now. So what we can, you know, so one approach that you might think of is going, oh, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab these vertexes and what I'll do is just literally move the vertexes to match that cylinder. Well, if we go back to the perspective view, it's not really doing what we want. You know, you still got these vertices here. I mean, you're not really solving these, and it's not scaling these. So that's not really a very good approach. Okay. What we want to do is basically scale all the vertices. So we can either just select, uh, if I go into vertex mode, we can either just select all the vertices of an edge loop or go into edge mode and just double click. Now, do that again. Edge mode, double click to select all the edges of a vertice. So whether we whether we're selecting all the edge, sorry, all the edges of an edge loop or all the vertices that make an edge loop makes no difference to how this will work. So yeah, but what we don't want to do is move individual vertices. It's going to make too much work, and you're not going to get the result that you want. If you want to, you know, it's it's a it, 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 you know, the vase is 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 the same in both axes. So you want to manipulate it in a uniform manner. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to select the scale tool. So this may sound a bit intuitive, but what we want to do is, is rather than, you know, to make these edge loops fit, rather than moving all the vertices, we're just going to scale the entire edge loop. OK, um, so uh, again, we've got this gotcha here. If I go into here, uh, into the perspective view and just move one of these axes, you'll see that all we're doing is moving in one uh, uh, in, in one axis and we're doing the same problem that we had earlier so again what we want to do is hold control and manipulate this other axis here so we uniformly scale both of these axes here okay great so that's a technique you'll see us using so you can see I'm just going to use that holding control bringing those in yeah I think this is kind of okay already although we could just bring it in a little bit maybe in fact I might just leave it there uh, bring that in and we just do that for each of these axes, okay? I'm going to go here. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go here. Okay, and you can see that because it's got quite a lot of perspective in this picture, it does make it a little bit awkward to work with the reference image, but we'll make it work. Bring that in there. And so this is going to kind of act as a base. That's kind of my thinking, okay? So hopefully now what we have is a nice round vase, okay? Um, obviously what I can do is uh, I can just move this image away. Uh, if I move this image back, um, obviously because the side view 
uh, is orthogonal. It has no perspective. Uh, it has no impact on, on how the side view or the reference image appears in the side view. So moving this reference image uh, back and forth in this plane here, it doesn't cause any problems. Um, so what I can also do is at this stage, I can go into faces and I can just delete these faces. Uh, now I've got a feeling if I go and select like this, I'm going to select top and bottom faces, which I don't want to do. So I'm wondering, I'm probably just going to end up, I'm trying to think I can double click or go shift click. Okay, I'm just going to have to click each one of these faces. If someone can come up with a better method of selecting all the faces at the top of a cylinder, uh, put it in the comments section. Okay, because uh, uh, I'll be interested to know. Uh, obviously, watch you're not deleting any other faces, so I'll, I have done that. I'm just going to undo that and just make sure those faces aren't selected and then delete again. Uh, my manipulation handle was kind of in the way as I was selecting these, so I just had to kind of delete it in two parts. Oh, there you go. So there we are. Uh, ideally, I want to give this a bit of thickness, so what I might do is kind of, uh, I could just scale this down, uh, copy it, duplicate it, scale it down, and and then connect it back, back up to give this a bit of thickness as well. Uh, but I'm not going to worry about that at this stage. Uh, and then if I want to smooth this uh, vase, uh, what I can do is just press the three key. So I'm going to go into object mode and just press the three key. And I now get a smooth version of this vase that hopefully matches pretty well the uh, reference image that we use. So that's how we can use component modeling to match a reference image.